So today we have, I'm going to speak about a component in our cell which allows us to survive and, day, and do day-to-day -day activities uh, without any problem. So this is the organelle which was primarily discovered to provide energy to the cell, but later on it was extrapolated to various other activities. So basically mitochondria, which actually was known as the powerhouse of the cell, was first discovered in a parasite that is Trypanosoma. And discovery was pretty interesting. When the scientists actually saw this parasite under a microscope, that is they magnified this particular parasite, what they saw was that just below the flagella, the flagella is something which allows the parasite to move. move. It is like a sewer which is in front of the cell and it allows the parasites to move. So just below the, that flagella, they found a large organelle, uh, a large uh, you know, cellular component which was densely uh, stained actually, you know, dark in color and they considered to be a bioblast, something which allows an organism to move. Okay, so this is how it was previously uh, you know, discovered, but later on the name mitochondria was given by a scientist called as Carl Blender. So what he used was, he used different kinds of dyes and he stained this particular organelle and he named it to be mitochondria something which is you know, a thread like granules present inside the cell because it looked like thread like structures within the cell. But the association of this particular organelle was actually discovered by Otto Wagberg. He did a very seminal discovery. What he did was that he performed a series of beautiful experiments and he found that this is the organelle which is responsible for consumption of oxygen inside the cell. So whichever oxygen, whatever oxygen we breathe in, it is basically consumed by this particular organelle or this mitochondria. Later on, he extrapolated his findings to the cancer cells and he made a very nice statement which was uh, continued for the next 20-30 years that cancer cells do not require energy derived from mitochondria for its survival but it derives energy from various other sources and a phenomena which is called as the auto work work uh, or sorry uh, phenomena which is called as the work work effect and for this he was uh, awarded the Nobel Prize. So this is the basic structure of a mitochondria which is, uh, you know, we will go to the details. It is a two membrane structures uh, and uh, the inner membrane is folded or is convoluted so, in, so as to increase the surface area. But this uh, mitochondria basically didn't exist in the cell to start with. Basically, there is a theory which is called as the endosymbiotic theory where it proposes that the earliest cells, the archaic cells actually engulfed a bacteria when the earth was evolving and this bacteria was not consumed by that particular cell but it stayed inside the cell and gradually it started off that this particular bacteria provided energy to the cell and the cell in turn provided food to the bacteria and this way they started coexisting together. So this is what I was talking about that this particular organelle is responsible for providing energy to the cell and this is something uh, that is this is a little complicated but I will uh, tell it in very simple terms that we in this room we see various kinds of gates. Here is a gate, here is a piece of gate and we use this gate to get in and get out. Similarly inside the mitochondria what happens is the electrons are derived from the food and these electrons actually push their way to the different gates. So these four structures or five structures they are, that you are seeing here are the different gates. So through these gates, these electrons push in across the mitochondria and when they push in, they actually throw some protons to the outer chamber. So what happens is that there is a more number of protons on the upper chamber and a less number of protons at the lower chamber due to the passage of these electrons through these gates and you can compare it to typical hydroelectric plant. So this is a typical hydroelectric plant where we have an upper reservoir and we have a lower reservoir. The water flows from the upper reservoir onto the turbine to the lower reservoir and this flow of water causes the turbine to rotate thereby providing energy. That is electricity in this particular case. Similarly thing hap similar thing happens here in the mitochondria. So now the protons, more protons are there in the upper chamber. Uh, so they fall through to this ATP synthase, this, this is the other gate which is encircled here. So this is like a turbine. So when these protons fall, th fall through this ATP synthase, this allows it to rotate. And when this rotates, it provides energy, which is in turn called as ATP in our case. And this energy allows us to do a lot of work that uh, in our day-to-day -day activities. 
But as I said, uh, or as we know, any chemical reaction, this is a kind of a chemical reaction. So any chemical reactions needs to be controlled. If this chemical reaction goes out of control, then it creates a lot of issues. So in this particular case, what happens is that these electrons react with oxygen because oxygen is now getting consumed. So if it, get, it gets out of control, these electrons act, act with more number of oxygen to create something called as free radicals. I think all of us have heard about the term free radicals. This is created when excess amount of oxygen reacts with the electrons. And these free radicals are responsible for various uh, damages inside the body at the level of DNA or other different biomolecules which is in turn related to aging. So in the cells, there is always a homeostatic balance. So as an egg is, you know, always the things are out of control. So there are mechanisms in place which keep things in, the, in control. And this is like a balance. So when this balance is maintained, everything is proper. But when this balance is not maintained, so there is some defect. So when this balance is not maintained, the mitochondria becomes defective. And this leads to reduced activity, excess amount of reactive oxygen species generation linked to enhanced aging. So what people are trying to do presently is to reduce, that is one of the mechanisms per se, is to reduce the amount of free radicals that is present in the body. You know, you will have less aging and all those things. So what they do is that they actually reduce the number of free radicals that is produced by this mitochondria. So as to increase the lifespan, uh, increase our lifespan. So in this slide, what I am trying to summarize here is that uh, this particular organelle, due to its critical role in ener energy generation, is associated with various disorders, which may lead to a disorders of the brain, disorders of the heart, or disorders related to the muscles. So any of the, any, you take any organ, in vital organ of the body, mitochondria plays a very important role in its maintenance. And if it is defective, you will find some kind of disorder associated that part, with, with that particular organ. But it's not that, that if the mitochondria de becomes defective, that it will generate a disorder or it will generate a disease. Why? Because in a particular cell, there are approximately 100 to 200 mitochondria in a cell. It's not like X, X, X cell by X mitochondria. So if you, even if one of the or two mitochondria become defective, it hardly matters. So you can consider this class. For example, say some of the people are sleeping, some of the people may be awake. If the person's number of people who are sleeping is more than the number of people who are awake, the lecture is boring. If the number of people who are awake is more than the number of people who are sleeping, that means the lecture is interesting. That is how it works here. If the number of defective mitochondria is more, then it will generate a disease or a disorder. But if the number of mitochondria is, uh, defective mitochondria is less, then it hardly matters to the cell. It can go on carrying its own function properly. So now what people are trying to do here is, in case of all uh, disorders where uh, mitochondria become defective, that they are trying to replace the mitochondria with a healthy. If suppose some other mitochondria are defective, then what they are trying to do is remove those defective mitochondria and replace them with the healthy, healthy ones. So as to, if any person later on has a risk of developing any mitochondria associated disorder, then that disorder will not be, you know, will not develop in that particular uh, individual. So this is a, another series of long lecture regarding the, how the mitochondria can be really, uh, utilized in uh, curing various disorders and it is beyond the scope of present discussion. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you.